John 13, 34 and 5. I thought, well, I've been in John. Casey's been in John. No, no sense in leaving John. So, um, so I just thought I would do a devotional this evening type thing. Um, John 13, 34 and 5 again. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one to another. Here's what he commanded us. Got to love one another. God never said it'd be easy. He just said we got to love one another. So um, that's the command. In John 17, 21, it's the, uh, men- the prayer I mentioned that Jesus prayed for the disciples on the night of his betrayal. And on verse 21, when he was praying to the Father for you and me, he said that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I am thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So, Jesus started a new order, a business, a brand new order, with his own command structure. In the Old Testament, there was Moses' law. That was the command structure. Now he started a brand new one, and the command structure was you got to love one another. Knew it wouldn't be easy. I'm going to be an old we make it hard on each other. So Jesus prayed for us. He prayed, Father, let them be one, even as we are one. Now that's the process, and it's going to take some time. But we'll get it right when we step over on the other side. But in the meantime, we're to be working toward that, being in unity, one with the other. As Paul wrote um, to um, the Philippians, he wrote that, um, if there, in, in, you know, I always paraphrase the first four verses of chapter 2. Uh, verse 5 is the, the part that said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Um, but the first four verses, he in essence says, if there's anything spiritual happening among you, I'm paraphrasing, then fulfill my joy by getting along. And the only way that's going to happen is you have to come to a place where you're going to prefer the other one above yourself and put their needs first. And then he said, let this mind or this attitude be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And he goes into that beautiful scenario about how Jesus was in heaven. He's doing all right. And he laid all that aside because he preferred you. And so he's saying that's the attitude you and I are to have one toward another. And then where he says work out your own salvation after that, uh, again, uh, basically what he's saying is like working out a math problem. Carry it to its logical conclusion. The logical conclusion of your salvation is to love each other, to prefer one another. It doesn't always feel logical, but that's the logical conclusion. So Jesus commanded us to love one another, then he prayed for us. Let them be one, even as you and I are one. Now, how's it going to happen? If it was easy, we'd all be doing it already. Amen? Amen. How's it going to happen? Sticking with John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. So basically it's going to happen by doing diligence to his word. Giving diligence, paying attention to his scripture. You know, it's easy to slough off, you know, on the, I mean, to just, ah. You know, you grow up and your mom and dad tell you what to do and tell you what to do and tell you what to do. And then there comes a time as you get in those teen years where you just kind of, yeah, that's just mom being mom. And you kind of don't pay attention to it. I know all of you were always perfect children and obeyed your parents every day. But um, that's kind of the way we are with God. We read the Word where He said that you ought to love one another, and this is the only way the world is going to know you're the genuine article. He didn't say they would get that you're the genuine article because your doctrine is great. He said they're going to get it because you love one another. By this shall the world know that you're my disciples. And yet we just kind of slough off on that, and we think, ah, 
you know, I'll pay due diligence to uh, being in church every Sunday, to putting a check in the offering, to uh, tweaking my doctrine. I'll pay attention to a lot of things. But Jesus said, here's how it works. This is the law of the new order. And I'm not talking about the new world order. I'm talking about the new heavenly order. Uh, the diligent, I mean, the, the, the whole structure is built in loving one another, and so that's what Jesus prayed for you and I. So he's telling us, John's telling us in the verse I just read to you, the only way it's going to happen, the only way the love of God's going to get perfected in you is by doing diligence to His Word. So when you read the Word and it says something, you don't just say, ah, but you say, Lord, I want that thing happening in my life. If God tells me I ought to love you, then I ought to love you. Amen? How many of you know it's not a suggestion? He tells me it's the way I ought to be living. It's the way you ought to be living. So it's not going to happen if we never take the Word seriously. If we think, yeah, it's what He said, but it's okay if I don't. If that's our attitude, then it's never going to happen in our lives. And the world's never going to know what the real article is. What the genuine article is. The genuine article isn't the people that run around saying God hates gays. That's not the genuine article. The genuine uh, article is when people see in us the love of God among us and they know that they can come and be with us and be loved. That's the real thing. So you got to give diligence to the Word. The result in 1 John 2 verse 10. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. The contemporary English version said, But if we love others, we are in the light, and we don't cause problems for them. The Good News Bible said, If we love others, we live in the light, and so there is nothing in us that will cause someone else to sin. So what John is saying is, when we love people, and we love each other, then we're not somebody else's stumbling block. That's a pretty good result. Amen? Now, it doesn't mean somebody else won't claim that we're their stumbling block. People can claim anything they want. But if we're being diligent and loving each other, then there is no cause in us to cause someone else to stumble. We're not going to be the problem in somebody else's life. Again, just because they say we're the problem doesn't make us the problem. Amen? So if, I'm not telling you that when we love each other, there will never be anyone who says, who doesn't say we're the problem. There's a lot of people right now in this country who think you're the problem. But what the, what the uh, Scripture is saying is you're not really the problem. If you're going about loving folk, then you're not the problem in somebody else's life. Bottom line... 1 John 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Isn't that amazing? We always, most Christians from time to time struggle with them. Am I the real deal? The devil might even argue with you sometime and you think you confuse his thoughts for your thoughts and you wonder if you're even saved. But here the Scripture is saying, this is the way we know. Here's how we get it. Here's how we perceive in verse 16 of that verse, of that chapter, 1 John 3. Here's how we get that God loves us. He died for us. But he's saying in verse 14, here's how I know that I'm the real deal. We we try to be the real deal. I tell you, the church has made, re, uh, let me coin a word if it's not one, re, religiosity. Uh, you know, we have, uh, if we dress a certain way, if we act a certain way, if we talk a certain way, then we're the real deal. But John said, you might fool others, but you're not going to fool yourself. Here's how you know you're the real deal when you love others. Uh, and then a little farther in that, down in that chapter, 22 and 23, And what, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandments. Let me paraphrase. Here's how you get your prayers answered. Have faith in God and love others. Why? 
Because when you love others, you have confidence toward God. The Bible said, if our heart condemneth not, then we have confidence toward God. And you have confidence toward God when you love others. That's what the Scripture is saying. Let me end with a story. A closing illustration. One day a man was walking across a bridge and saw another man standing on the edge, about to jump off. He immediately ran up to him and said, Stop! Don't do it! The other said, Why shouldn't I? He responded, Well, there's so much to live for. Yeah, like what? Well, are you religious or an atheist? Religious. Me too. Are you Christian or Jewish? Christian. Me too. Are you Catholic or Protestant? Protestant. Me too. Are you Episcopalian or Baptist? Baptist. Wow, me too. Are you Baptist Church of God or Baptist Church of the Lord? Baptist Church of God. Me too. Are you original Baptist Church of God or are you reformed Baptist Church of God? Reformed Baptist Church of God. Me too. Are you reformed Baptist Church of God, Reformation of 1879 or reformed Baptist Church of God, Reformation of 1915? Reformed Baptist Church of God, Reformation of 1915, to which he said, Die, you heretic, and pushed him off the bridge. We get a little too picky with what people believe, amen?